Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the U.S. dollar Argentine peso crossed over the U.S. dollar Venezuelan um, currency. And uh, you can see here the, the blue candlesticks is the Argentine currency. Now, you know that uh, the socialist per Peronist uh, Cristina Fernandez is stepping down. Uh, whereas in Argentina, if you heard the uh, um, opposition leader was assassinated in a public speaking engagement, we know that the bus driver, um, Maduro, Mad Maduro, as I call him, isn't going to give up power easily. He's, it, both of them have destroyed their nations. Um, what's fascinating is that when you look at this chart, we know that in free markets, uh, the... Um, parabolic moves that you see in, in uh, free markets, whether it's a commodity or uh, a stock or anything else like that, even a cryptocurrency, um, parabolic moves are going to be met by a crash. That's just the nature of things. Um, what goes up must come down, except when you're talking about government manipulation. And you can see right here, we had a parabolic spike in the Argentine peso. And then guess what? Just more and more devaluation. So you can see from about 2008 or so, we have a move, um, the currency losing essentially two-thirds of its value. The uh, stair-stepping here on the Venezuelan currency is actually uh, much, much worse because this is the official exchange rate. I've shown you on dollar today that uh, the exchange rate is, is multiples of, of what it is officially. So in that sense, the Argentinians are actually more honest about their currency. But this is a perfect example of what I was talking about before mentioning Andy Hoffman about how the crisis is already happening. If you are in these countries and you are living through this situation, then obviously, and let's go ahead and pull up the Indian currency real quick here. Obviously, if you're living through this situation, then if you have put most of your assets into gold and silver and cryptocurrencies and anything else that is not um, a official government currency, then you have done very well. You've either preserved most of your wealth or you've actually made a gain. Now, this is the in Indian rupee. And you can see that uh, it, it's forming a pennant formation here, so it, it looks like it's going to lose more value. Uh, if you remember the machinations with the Indian government, they had the uh, attempted uh, gold importation suppression scheme, which failed. And uh, then they got an election of uh, a new president, which kind of uh, caused the... Uh, currency to rally a bit, but then we turn around and we go even worse, and and now we've got more schemes. Uh, they had the scheme to have Indians try to uh, deposit their gold in banks, and it failed uh, tremendously. Uh, whatever you think about Indians, for any reason, it's very clear that Indians are very wise in understanding that their government cannot be trusted. So. Obviously, you can see from this chart, it's nothing as dramatic as the Argentine or Venezuelan situation. But since about 2008, at a price of around 38 or 39, you can see that the Indian currencies roughly lost 40% of its value. Same thing in Japan, same thing around the world. It hasn't happened yet in the U.S. dollar, but it's going to happen. Now, the big news story out, at least for me, the big news story is this uh, IMF FDR basket, inclusion of the Chinese yuan. It's not, in my opinion, even representative of the way things should be, but it's one of the first steps in that direction. Before we do that, though, I want to take you to now... Uh, if you're not into the hoax thing, then just, I don't know, fast forward a couple minutes. But we're going to cover one of these hoaxes real quick here, uh, at least potential hoaxes. I don't really know, honestly don't know. You have to make up your own mind on these things. Um, basically, for me, everything that appears on the mainstream media is a lie or a hoax or nonsense and propaganda created by the government. So do your own analysis, but just to... Uh, give you an idea of what I think may be going on. I'm not really sure. 
is this latest one is this uh, Colorado gunman and um, let's start off with an analysis by um, just a kind of youtuber uh, who just does his own thing anybody can do this and that's really what's neat about YouTube is that any Joe out there can do his own analysis whether you agree with it or not is neither here nor there, but let's listen to Kay Kristofferson and his uh, take on this thing. We're getting a second caller now. Heard by being in the parking lot. Somebody is shooting. Actually, we're getting several more calls now. There's call unit. CSPD is working an active shooter. Again, CSPD has an active shooter. 3480 Centennial Boulevard has the same parenthood. Oh, they just started moving out. Hey, 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 hey. Hey everybody, it's Krusty Christofferson coming at you live from our studio. How's it going, folks? Well, here's a Associated Press video, the Colorado uh, Springs Planned Parenthood Clinic shooting uh, that happened on the uh, 27th, Black Friday, November 27, 2015, and... Uh, you can see a uh, clearer shot of the dummy here, I think, than my other video. Uh, they had that all blurred out to make it harder to see the dummy. But you can see clearly that that's a dummy that they're saving. And that uh, this is obviously a drill that they're carrying out. And they sent an overwhelming response to uh, reports of one man with a gun shooting. They sent over 100 people, uh, militarized police, and uh, it took him a long time to subdue one shooter if uh, you want to go with the story which I don't because it's 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 an active shooter drill carried out and uh, made to, to to go to go live and, uh, and then they uh, they uh, follow a script that they've already uh, have pre-written about uh, how many casualties uh, this this one they're saying three people killed and nine injured and uh, well uh, There's no proof anybody died, as usual. And uh, once again, they're going for a gun control agenda with this, and uh, that's all this is about. And they're going to keep carrying these out until they get the gun control that they want. And uh, these uh, these people are all in on it. They know damn well that this is a drill, but they're going to play it off like uh, their lives were in danger. And oh my God, we got to do something about these guns. We got to take the guns away from the slaves to make them into even better slaves. And uh, these aren't heroes. These are the people that are selling you out if you haven't figured it out. All right, folks, it's Krusty Christopherson signing okay, out. Okay, so that's uh, yeah. his analysis. So the thing stinks from the beginning, but let me show you. Uh, Whenever you see that, if you remember the media spin here, this is, um, it, it fits into two memes. One meme is the gun control meme, and the other meme is the Planned Parenthood meme. Now, we know that Planned Parenthood was openly busted selling human body parts. And uh, the Republicans and Paul Ryan and these people coming in here were going to attach the defunding of Planned Parenthood to the bill, of course, that funded the government, but they didn't do that. They gave Obama an open-ended budget, and that didn't happen. But we know that uh, I've covered Rhino Ryan and, and Boehner and these people, uh, their sellouts. So um, this is a article on the conservative firing line. And, of course, the narrative that we get is that we have some right-wing anti-abortion Christian who went in here and we had a rumor that he said baby parts or something like that. But now we find out that the records are sealed. So we're not going to find out who this guy is, what his background is, what his prior arrest records are. You can see on Sunday the Associated Press revealed the officials involved with the Colorado Springs shootings have sealed the warrants and will not disclose why Robert Deere allegedly went on a shooting spree killing three people. The AP added 
Police say in a statement Sunday that they are sealing the warrants related to the case of the 57-year-old Robert Louis Deere. They say they're not providing information on the weapon used in Friday's shooting, a timeline of events, or a motive of the suspect. That will continue to stoke speculation about what led to the shooting that killed a police officer and two other people. Deere is scheduled to make his first corner appearance Monday afternoon. The news was buried in an article about the three shooting victims. So there you go. Uh, the narrative is very clear. We've got uh, Hillary Clinton running, trying to, uh, you know, Planned Parenthood is a, a big thing for the Democrats to push and for the uh, Republicans to oppose. So conveniently, we have a person who no one knows anything about, but is suspected to be a uh, right-wing nut job. But I, I would say, first of all, that the anti-abortion people, pretty much to a man, except for, I would say, maybe government agents, have said that they do not believe in violence to solve violence. They do believe that, that abortion is murder, but they don't believe that committing murders is any solution to that. So, of course, um, this person has nothing to do with the pro-life movement. But I want to briefly take you to uh, a video that uh, was posted that shows a little bit of this shooting and then uh, do a quick comparison for you here. And other propane tanks, that's now part of what police are doing at that scene, going through it to see if any of those items may in fact be explosive devices. So this is the big scene that the hoaxers are, are looking at here. This is where they're bringing out this body, quote unquote, onto the stretcher. People have commented that there's a tremendous number of people here and the way they handle the body. And also clearing that building to see if in fact there are any other victims. still. So here's the body. Let's concentrate on this body because uh, as uh, the commenter earlier was saying, this is, this is a um, dummy. So Don't. let's get a close shot here. That's a pretty good freeze frame of this. Another person on one of the conspiracy blogs posted a picture of one of the dummies that's used in the training. And this is the dummy that was posted. So I want to have you do a comparison here real quick. Inside. You no, know, the 11 people taken to hospital hearing now. But so two people that's that the speculation. I'll put all the links inside, on there for you. Know, the 11 Mysteriously, this picture has uh, become kind of hard so to find. So cleaning that building to see if, in fact, there are any other victims still in So that's the speculation. Is that a dummy? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, what's the agenda? Well, I think the agenda is pretty clear. To get your guns and to say that Planned Parenthood is persecuted by Christian crazies. So let's get to the main story. Um, it's going to be this IMF Yuan inclusion. And this is really important. We've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, the projected percentage that the IMF is talking about here, if you remember, there was a lot of news that hit last summer. And that was when, the, uh, uh, when China, the, the news cycle began with China being rejected from inclusion in the IMF basket. And as soon as that happened, we had surprise devaluation out of the Bank of China. And that long trend that I've shown you of the Chinese Yuan appreciation reversed itself and China started to devalue their currency. Now that was, as soon as that happened, literally within days, uh, these mysterious bombings started to occur at Chinese ports. And one of the big ports was the uh, port that was right outside of, of Beijing, the major port there. But there have been a number of them dribbling in. So now we get the official news, and it wasn't supposed to be revisited really for a year, so I don't know how this came up. But now the IMF is proposing to give an 11% weighting to the Chinese yuan. That's above the Japanese yen and above the British pound. Now, I would say that if you're going to give a weighting to the Chinese yuan, you probably want to put it around 30%. I think this is uh, ridiculously low, but it's a move in an inevitable direction. So let's read this. IMF staff earlier this month proposed that the yuan be added to the basket of currencies used to value the SDR reserve asset created by the institution in 1969 
And today that decision is confirmed as expected. The IMF's executive board decision today means that the yuan will be included in the SDR basket from October 1st, 2016, effectively anointing the yuan as a major reserve currency and represents recognition that yuan status is rising along with China's place in global finance. The IMF reviews the com composition of the basket every five years. The fund rejected the yuan for inclusion during the last review in 2010, saying that the currency didn't meet the necessary criteria, but now IMF approves yuan funding into the basket. So here's the current makeup of the SDR basket. You can see that the US dollar has a 41.73% uh, representation with the Euro at 30.93, uh, the Chinese Yuan 10.92, and actually, no, that's the projected one. Uh, we'll see the current one in a minute here. And uh, the Japanese Yen 8.33 and the Pound Sterling at 8.09. So it's, uh, it's kind of like, I, I believe it was Andy Hoffman who said, uh, we're talking about what is the dirtiest shirt? You know, who has the dirtiest shirt in the laundry? Because these are all dirty shirts. I mean, these are all terribly flawed currencies, as Jimmy Rogers would say. Uh, starting with the U.S. dollar, the largest deficits, derivatives, and debts in the history of the world. Um, unbelievable. The euro. Uh, what can you say about the euro? Now, this is an experiment that began with the uh, European free markets and uh, the EEC and then uh, European common market and uh, was under the proposed idea that those markets should trade with each other without restriction of tariffs and also proposed that there should be a unified currency and that there, the border should be free so you can jump on a train and go through all the countries of Europe. Of course, that's all now collapsing with the uh, refugee crisis and all of the Islamic refugees coming into Europe. Uh, if Europe begins to lock its borders country by country, it's almost like the European Union begins to dissolve. So uh, the euro is a terrible currency. Then we've got the Japanese yen. This is a currency I've actually gone long on uh, in a cross with South Africa. That's a story I don't have time to cover, but South Africa made some big news today announcing that they can't save their currency. And it's not surprising considering that uh, the uh, miners are their major source of income and the miners are being destroyed. But uh, the Japanese yen is still a very, very sick currency and we had the news come out today that uh, the largest uh, hedge fund, pension fund, sovereign wealth fund in the world, which is a Japanese retirement fund, lost 5% in the quarter. And that's not surprising because they, they invested in China, uh, Japanese equities, but uh, the currency had depreciated more than the equities uh, went up. So that was uh, a big failure for Abe. And then we've got the pound sterling, which is uh, a currency that died nearly 100 years ago. And uh, you can just figure that one out by the name, pound sterling. Uh, that would be a pound of silver. And uh, at today's ridiculously suppressed prices, a troy pound of silver would be, what, $300. So uh, that's a currency that's collapsed. But uh, so really, I would have to say that all of these currencies are overweighted against the Chinese yuan. I think the U.S. dollar needs to lose about maybe another... 20 30 percent the euro maybe 30 or 40 percent uh the japanese yen uh maybe 10 or 20 percent and the pound sterling another 10 or 20 percent so based on that i i think that maybe the chinese you want you to have 40 or 50 percent uh representation in this basket but let's look at uh foreign exchange reserves and what those mean and what this change is going to mean now in the old system, which is a system that I think we're probably going to be going back to, which is the gold reserve system. It was a pretty simple system. It was a system where uh, gold was the foreign exchange reserve. That was the only foreign exchange reserve. Countries accumulated or uh, dispersed gold 
based on what their balance of trade was. So if you had a country like the United States, for example, that imported a tremendous amount but didn't export that much, then what would happen was their reserves of gold would become depleted until eventually, if they didn't take action, they would become zero and they wouldn't be able to buy anything. Or if they began to take action, they would recognize that they were making major mistakes and they'd have to change economic policy drastically so that they could begin to export more than they import and begin to accumulate gold again. That was the old system. An example I pointed out in the past is the Japanese. As Jimmy Rogers has noted, the Japanese recognized that uh, they as a society would necessarily need to survive by goosing their foreign exchange reserves. And in the 1970s, the Japanese, if you remember, there was the term Jap metal, which was a reference to how poor quality things were coming out of Japan. As we all know, it, the, the rest is history. The quality of products coming out of Japan, especially the automobiles and uh, electronic products, became the best in the world. So the Japanese recognized that uh, the way they would repair their foreign exchange problem was not by exporting natural resources, which they didn't have, but by manufacturing superior products, which they did, and they were successful. Uh, there are other countries that have done that. Singapore is basically a rock and, and has a good uh, foreign reserve position. So that's one way of dealing with it. That's the old system. The new system is a system where you hold foreign exchange reserves based on the currencies of the countries that have for, uh, currencies that others want to hold. So that's going to be currently the dollar, the euro, the yen, and the pound. Now you can see today that's changing. So let's read a little bit of this. Foreign exchange reserves are, in a strict sense, only the foreign currency deposits held by national central banks and monetary authorities. However, in popular usage in the list below, it also includes gold reserves, special drawing rights, SDRs, and the International Monetary Fund reserve position because this total figure, which is usually more accurately termed official reserves or international reserves or official international reserves is more readily available. These foreign currency deposits are the financial assets of the central banks and monetary authorities. They're held in different reserve currencies, e.g. the US dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, the pound sterling, and which are used to back its liabilities, e.g. the local currency issued and the various bank reserves deposited with central bank by the government or financial institutions. Before the end of the gold standard, gold was the preserved reserve currency. Some nations are converting foreign exchange reserves into sovereign wealth funds, which can rival foreign exchange reserves in size. So let's look at the list here. This is the current list uh, that we have. I don't know how, how accurate or how new it is. Uh, it looks like they have different months for them reporting. Most of them look like the fall of this year. So you can see China coming in at the top with a whopping 3.5, 3.6 trillion dollars in foreign exchange reserves. Now, one would ask, how does the SDR basket uh, change that? Well, it's not going to be in uh, China's interest to accumulate more of their own currency, so we really need to look at the others. And the order is kind of strange. Uh, knowing how sick Japan is, it's interesting to see them in number two with 1.2 trillion. And then we get Saudi Arabia, we get Switzerland, Taiwan, South Korea, Russia, Brazil. So you can see the BRICS here. Uh, the BRICS pretty much dominate this list, first of all. Then we've got India, Hong Kong, Singapore, Mexico, Germany, Algeria, the UK, Thailand. Yes, that's right, folks. Thailand has more foreign exchange reserves. And France and Italy and Turkey have more foreign exchange reserves than the United States. So that would indicate that there's going to be a very, very large adjustment in foreign exchange reserves. My back of the matchbook estimate it, based on this list is going to be about five trillion, a five trillion in foreign exchange reserves that will be affected. It may be more, it may be less, but if we take the 10% figure that we're talking about, um, then we're talking about 
say, let's say 11%, I'm guessing roughly one to two trillion dollars is going to be changed from US dollars to another currency, whether that currency is the uh, yen, the pound, the euro, I'm gonna guess about one to two trillion dollars. That's gonna be about one to two trillion dollars more that the Federal Reserve is gonna to have to soak up and that's gonna be a big, big thing. So things are lining up now. I think uh, the interest rate meeting is coming up. We know we had a secret meeting and we didn't really get any information on that, but I'm still standing by my prediction that uh, when the Federal Reserve meets, we're probably going to see the Federal Reserve suddenly reverse course and actually announce another QE. That would be perfectly consistent with what we're seeing with this SDR inclusion story. And uh, we have tremendous strength in the dollar. Uh, the dollar is set up for a event that would weaken it significantly. It's got plenty of room to breathe. Uh, an increase in interest rates would send the dollar where? We don't know. So I'm going to bank on the doll, uh, the Federal Reserve meeting actually uh, announcing some type of QE, but we'll have to wait and see, and we'll talk to you next time.